Dear students and viewers, welcome to Veterinary Parasitology Lecture Series. In this video lecture, I'm going to talk about common morphological features of the genera under the family around Christomatidae. And afterwards, I'll talk about important species under different genera of the same family. And later on, I'll I'm going to talk about the morphological features, life cycle, pathogenesis or pathogenic significance, clinical sign, diagnosis of important parasitic diseases caused by the different uh, species under the genera of the same family. Basically, one of the important parasitic diseases I'm going to talk about throughout my lecture that is parampistomiasis or amphistomiasis. So the family Parampistomatidae poses 11 genera. You don't need to remember all the genera because they are not equally important to cause diseases in uh, animals and man. You could only remember those species or those genus which have a veterinary and public health significance. For an example, uh, Parampistomum, Crotaliforum, Fiscadarius, Zygnetocotyle and gastrodiscoids. All these genus poses some common morphological features. So before talking about these morphological features, I would like to introduce some of the figures related to some species under different genera. So the first one is Parampistomum cervi, the next one is Crotaliforum, Crotaliforum, and the third one is Fiscadarius, and the next, that is last one is Gastrodiscoids, gastrodiscus hominis. So what you can see if you look at the picture, you can see first if I talk about the uh, shapes of the body, Parampistomum cervi or the species under the uh, genus Parampistomum, they are conical shape. I'll show you the figure in a moment. And afterwards, that is they will have causes two sucker. So the first one that is located anterior to the body, this is called oral sucker, and the sucker which is located uh, terminal that is posterior to the body, that is called ventral sucker. Ventral sucker is also known as acetabulum. And between these two sucker, oral sucker, ventral sucker is well developed, uh, and this is actually used uh, to attest with the host body. So this one is oral sucker, ventral sucker, this one is oral sucker for Fiscadarius species, ventral sucker, and this one is oral sucker and ventral sucker. In some species next to the oral sucker, uh, they may pose a pair of posterior pockets. So posterior pockets is present in case of Fiscadarius species or gastrodiscus species and you know for the trematurs uh, they pose as incomplete digestive system uh, for most of the genera they don't have pharynx but sometimes they have uh, esophagus with or without a muscular bulb so esophagus is here here is the esophagus and next to the esophagus, another uh, part of the digestive system is called the intestinal cica. So intestinal cica is uh, one uh, flows to the right side of the body and another one is left side of the body. And this is simple. Simple means uh, they don't have any branching, lateral branching. If you can remember the species like Fasciola hepatica zygantica, the intestinal cica is laterally branched. But here in this uh, family, the intestinal cica is simple. And what else you can see? You can see uh, here there is a pore here. This is called genital pore. And genital pore may be located anterior to the body, sometimes in the mid position of the body, or sometimes uh, that is terminal. Uh, to the terminal position of the body and 
test is maybe the, this one is test is one and this one is test is two so test is maybe located side by side and uh, or tandem in position tandem means one is located up and another one is located next to it that is down and you uh, just remember testes is lobulated so one testes is located here and another testes is located uh, here and so uh, if you uh, think about the common morphological features all these uh, flukes known as ampistome or sometimes they also call rumen fluke or stomach fluke due to their location and body conical for an example parampistomum cervi and body could be oval shape for an example cotyliforon cotyliforum and i missed another thing that is sometimes there is a pouch in the body so uh, this is called the ventral pouch so this one is actually the ventral pouch for fiscoidarius species and tegument is spineless for all the genera and i have already mentioned about the oral or anterior sucker located anteriorly and the posterior sucker or ventral sucker or acetabula located terminal to the body and this is actually used for uh, attachment and pharynx there is no pharynx only there is presence of esophagus with or without muscular bulb and intestinal cica is simple that is there is no branching okay and i have also talked about uh, the testes testes is lobulated here you can see the lobulation of the uh, testes testes is lobulated lobulated and this is tandem in position that is one is located up and other one is located down and ovary ovary is located posterior to the testes uh, here this is the ovary which is located posterior to the uh, testes and uterus runs forward in the dorsal part of the body and coil if you look back that is uh, in my previous slide so you can see here so you can uh, uterus runs forward to the body so this is the uterus runs forward to the body and they are coiled to accommodate more eggs and the vitelline glands are strongly developed and lateral in position you can see in this picture the uh, black spots uh, which is located lateral to the body so these are actually the vitelline gland and i have already mentioned in my earlier slide about the genital pore so genital pore could be located uh, anterior third of the body or sometimes in the mid position or sometimes uh, terminal to the body and so these are the common features um, of the gen genera under the family parapistomatidae family so in the next slide we'll talk about some of the important species under each of the genus and here don't forget the life cycle is a life cycle of this genera is indirect that is there is involvement of an intermediate host or vector that is the snail host and the eggs of uh, eggs are operculated and i'll talk about more details about the eggs of different species uh, in later part of my presentation so there are 11 genera under the family parenthistomatidae one of the important genus under this family is parenthistomum which causes uh, disease that is parenthistomiasis or amphistomiasis in animals so you need to know all the common morphological features of this parasite so that you can identify easily normally in live specimen they are red in color otherwise they are uh, red to brownish or pinkish in color it measures around uh, 0 0.5 centimeter to 2 millimeters that is 0.5 centimeter length and width is 0.2 centimeter the body is uh, elongated or conical or pear shaped therefore it is called conical fluke 
and another important characteristics include the dorsal side of the body is uh, slightly uh, converse and the ventral side of the body is concave there are two suckers one is located here that is called anterior sucker and other is located terminally or posteriorly this is called ventral sucker and ventral sucker is very well developed it is used for attachment with the host body and intestinal cecum runs both side of the body both side of the body and it is simple that is there is no branch or lateral branching and genital pore genital pore is located anteriorly that is uh, it is located just beneath the bifurcation of the intestinal cecum and testis is lobulated we know that and it is uh, located uh, above the ovary and uterus uterus runs anterior to the body and it is coiled to accommodate more eggs and you can see also the vital area uh, that is located lateral to the body so this is the list of different parasite under different genera of the family Parampistomatidae. So a lot of species are enlisted here. Some important species are Parampistomum cervi or Parampistomum explanatum. The next one is Cotaliforum cotaliforum. This is also known as Parampistomum cotaliforum. And uh, next important species is Gastrothylax cuminifer and Fisco, uh, Fiscoidarius elongatus. So all those species are located in rumen and reticulum of different domestic animal like cattle, sheep, goat, buffalo and different other ruminants. Among them, Parambistomum sarvi or Parambistomum explanatum. It is distributed all over the world, particularly in the tropical and subtropical areas. Cotaliforum, Cotaliforum, it is also distributed worldwide. And these two parasites, that is Gastrothylax cruminifer, this is actually distributed in Indian subcontinent and Russia, Middle East, and Europe. And Fiscadarius elongatus, this is also distributed in uh, different countries of Asian subcontinent. Another important parasite is Zygontocotyl explanatum or Parambistomum explanatum. So this parasite is found in bile duct, gallbladder, and duodenum of buffalo. This is less commonly occurred in cattle. This parasite is distributed in India, Middle East, and different countries of Far East. And this particular parasite, that is gastrodiscus as a shiacus, this is found in a small intestine and large intestine of equine and this is responsible for causing causing hyperacute colitis in uh, horses and next important parasite is gastrodiscoides hominis this is located in cecum and colon of man monkey and rat and the last uh, important parasite is pseudodiscus hawkinsi this is uh, found in small intestine of elephant and man. So gastrodiscoides hominis and pseudodiscus hawkinsi. This two parasite is found in uh, human. Life cycle of paramphistomes. Particularly we will discuss here in detail about the life cycle of paramphistomum cervi. So you know the life cycle is indirect that is there is involvement of the intermediate host. In this case different snail species of genera. So it includes planarvis, endoplanarvis, bulinus, limnia, fossaria, and different other genera. The location of this location of the final host uh, of this parasite is rumen and reticulum. This is actually the adult parasite will be located in rumen and reticulum and the empistome that is immature stasis will be found in a small intestine. And time required for the completion of this life cycle is around three to four months. 
So if you want to describe the life cycle in a very brief way, you could start like the uh, adult parasite will be found in the rumen and reticulum and they will release eggs. Eggs will be passed through the feces and a certain time will be required uh, for the development of merosidium within this egg. And later on, this egg will has to release merosidium in the water body and merosidium will look for snail host in the water. And when they will get into the snail host, there will be development of a sporocyst, radia, and sarcaria. Finally, the sarcaria will leave the snail host and they will uh, go for the uh, ancestation. So ancestation on the harvest or any kind of objects uh, within a very short time. And afterwards, uh, final host will further infected after having this metrosarcaria on the harvest during foraging. And afterwards, this uh, ancestor metrosarcaria will travel to the small intestine and there, there will be existation and they will stay over there for a certain time. And afterwards, they will move back to the rumen and reticulum to become mature parasite. And this mature parasite will release, start releasing eggs. But if you want to know more information uh, about the life cycle of Parampistomum cervi, so after releasing the eggs through feces, there will be development of Merosidium by three to four weeks. And later on, these uh, operculated eggs will hast out to release Merosidium in the water body and immediately they will uh, look for the snail host and when they get a snail host, they will penetrate it and there will be development of sporocyst, radian, sarcaria. And this, the uh, time required for this development of these three stages will require around 30 to 40 days, depending on temperature and humidity. And after the last stages, that is uh, sarcaria, will leave the snail host and they will, uh, they will be, on the water body but uh, they will remain here for certain time that is around uh, several hours and within the several hours they will need to be insisted on harvest or any kind of objects and after the insistation that is insisted metasarcaria that is considered as infective stages and uh, this this will be look like black or pigmented body and will remain on the harvest or any kind of objects around three months. So within the three, three months, if uh, the final host forays on the contaminated pasture, they will be infected. And this ancestor metasarcaria will travel to the small intestine where the existation will be occurred. And uh, this uh, existed metasarcaria will be uh, will stay in the small intestine around three months but they will start moving to rumen uh, reticulum uh, within one to two months of infection so here here uh, the time required for the completion of the life cycle is three to four months and the uh, diagnostic stage that is uh, the eggs is the diagnostic stage by observing the eggs in the feces uh, we will come to know whether the animal is infected with uh, this parasite or not. And infective stages I have already mentioned, the ancestor metasarcaria. Pathogenesis or pathogenic significance of parampistomiasis or ampistomiasis. Parampistomiasis is caused by different species. Uh, some of them are enlisted here, and they are parampistomum cervi, Crotaliforum, Crotaliforum, Gastrothylax, and Fiscadarius species. And pathogenesis is caused by adult parasite as well as immature parasite or ampistomes. For the adult parasite, you know, they are located in uh, four stomach, particularly in rumen and reticulum. They are always non pathogenic or non harmful, even if. Uh, that is even with a large number of parasitic load uh, in the predilection site. 
Sometimes they may cause localized loss of human papillae in case of heavy infection. And in case of uh, Zygentocotyl explanatum, they, they will be found in the bile duct at gallbladder. So they are also considered as non-pathogenic. But sometimes there may be series of superficial hemorrhages due to attachment with the mucosa. And the damage may lead to uh, that is occlusion of the bile duct and sometimes there is damage in the liver followed by fibrosis. So before talking about the pathogenesis caused by the immature fluke, I would like to talk about, um, uh, talk about some of the things that is related to uh, this pathogenesis. So the first figure here you can see parampistomum feeding on ruminal epithelium and the second one is uh, feeding of mucus of the duodenum. So this sort of feeding is called plug feeder. And the next figure that is figure number three, uh, this is actually uh, after post-mortem of experimentally infected with uh, experimentally infected with uh, one of the parampistomum species in lamb. You can see there is severe hemorrhage and uh, those are visible through the peritoneal surface. And the last figures includes reddening of duodenal mucosa with huge number of empistome. If you closely look at here, you can see the empistomes. So the immature flukes or empistomes, they will be found in the small intestine, that is upper part of the small intestine, and they will attach themselves with the mucosa and they will also feed on the mucosa therefore they are called the plug feeder so due to the attachment and the plug feeding effect there will be uh, there will be damages of the mucosa leading to inflammation uh, necrosis and sometimes that is there will be uh, some damage on the villus that is villus atrophy will be found and eventually there will be slothing of the mucosa and ultimately there will be found hemorrhagic duodenitis and ulceration due to the extensive erosion uh, of the mucosa and due to the plaque feeder as well as loss of the mucosa loss of villi there will be continuous leakage of hemorrhage uh, into the gut and this will lead to generalized hyperproteinemia and in case uh, in case of the generalized hyperproteinemia or generalized edema there will be accumulation of the fluid in different body cavities and organs so this will lead to hydropericardium that is accumulation of the fluid in the pericardium and hydrothorax accumulation of the uh, fluid in the thorax and so on that is pulmonary edema and ascites and one of the important clinical signs would be appeared uh, in the, can be seen in the animal that is uh, bottle jaw. So fluid will be accumulated in uh, different loose surfaces of the body, particularly under the jaw. And the next one is due to the loss of plasma protein into the guard, there will be decomposition of the blood and plasma protein into the guard and ultimately this will lead to loose and persistent fetal diarrhea and next one is due to the extensive damage of the uh, small intestine there will be impaired food absorption or food assimilation and all together that is decomposition of the blood plasma protein into the gut and fetal diarrhea and due to the impaired food assimilation followed by uh, emaciation of the animal all together including the hyperproteinemia all together this will lead to death of the animal within 15 to 20 days post infection and another thing can be happened by the uh, immature flux so the, uh, I have already talked about that they will be found in the small intestine so from the small intestine you know uh, they can move to the bile duct as bile ducts open into the duodenum and they may lead to the cholecystitis 
and fibrosis and responsible for causing obstructive jaundice. So if anybody asks about the pathogenic significance of parambustomiasis or ambustomiasis, in a single word you can say adults are usually non-pathogenics, immature parasites are uh, highly pathogenic and they may cause hemorrhagic duodenitis and ulceration of the duodenum. And due to the mucosal damage, they are, uh, that is the pathogenesis also include generalized hypoproteinemia and there will be accumulation of uh, fluid in different organs and all together uh, the animal may die within 15 to 20 days post infection. So the clinical signs in parampistomiasis or amphistomiasis you know youngs are more susceptible to this parasitic infestation or infection compared to the adults because adult get some immunity due to the previous exposure. The major clinical sign includes edema, generalized edema, so that is called bottle jaw. There will be accumulation of the fluid in the loose surfaces of the body, uh, particularly in the submaxillary region and even in the lower part of the body. And sometimes it extends to the sternum in cattle uh, and in case of the sheep, uh, fluid accumulation will be seen on the chicks and in the bullocks there will be fluid accumulation in the prefuse as well and if you could remember the pathogenesis due to the continuous leakage of the hemorrhage from the duodenum that is from the small intestine the, there will be anemia and you can see the, uh, the visible mucous membrane will become pale in color and uh, there will be inappetite and this will lead to low the lower cessation of the feed intake and the animal become very emaciated and due to the continuous or persistent fatty diarrhea the animal will become more thirsty and sometimes they keep the muzzle deep into the water for a considerable time to get rid of this thrust So other clinical signs include profuse uh, fetid projectile diarrhea. So projectile diarrhea can be seen in Rinderpest and Jones disease. So you have to differentiate whether this diarrhea is due to ampistomiasis or parampistomiasis or some other diseases. So uh, you can easily differentiate it with this diarrhea with the diarrhea of Rinderpest. Uh, in, in ampistomiasis there is no oral lesion but in interface definitely you can see some oral lesion uh, uh, oral lesion developed within a week of infection and diarrhea also accompanied by mark weakness dehydration and animal will be very depressed there may be death of animal within 15 to 20 days post infection and you can also see dark color feces because blood is leakage from the intestine and this is mixed up with the uh, feces due to the decomposition of the blood the color will be dark and due to the continuous straining the hemorrhages from the rectum can also be seen and if the animal uh, lose the sphincter control ultimately there will be a voluntary release of the feces and another very important information in clinical cases there may be more than 30,000 immature parampistome in small intestine so necropsy findings in parampistomiasis or ampistomiasis if you uh, clearly understand the pathogenesis of uh, ampistomiasis or parampistomiasis you can easily write down the necropsy findings. So there will be muscular atrophy, that is animal will be emaciated and subcutaneous edema due to accumulation of the fluid in different body cavities. And the upper part of the uh, intestine, that is duodenum, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum become very thickened due to the inflammation and necrosis. 
and there will be covering of blood stained mucus, mucus and patches of humerus under the serosa, serosa. You can see this picture here. And there will be a large number of small brownish pink color fluids on the mucosa, that is on the duodenal mucosa or in the intestinal content. And even uh, during necropsy, you may not find huge number of flukes in the four stomach that is rumen reticulum or amomasum. So this is all about the necropsy findings. Diagnosis of parampistomiasis or amphistomiasis. So in order to diagnose the, this disease, uh, we have to go for the checking the clinical history, including the grazing history around the snail habitat and fluid, fluid feces with amphistomes. And also check the clinical findings that I have already talked about. And finally, you should go for the examination of the feces. So gross examination of the feces is important as well as a microscopic examination of the feces. So if you go for the gross examination of the feces, you can see some immature flukes uh, pass through the feces and you know the identifying characters of them. That is, there will be some, uh, there will be oral, there will be an oral sucker and the ventral sucker and the specimen will be red color or brownish to pink color. And by uh, microscopic examination, you can easily identify the eggs of Parampistomum species. So this is the eggs of Parampistomum and the another one is the egg of Fasciola species. So this, the morphologically, these two eggs are more or less similar, but you have to differentiate which one is which. So if you consider the size, the X of Parambistomum species is comparatively larger in comparison to the X of Fasciolae species. And the shell, the shell is very transparent in case of the X of Parambistomum species. Sometimes it is violet in color, but in, uh, in Zygentopodilex planatum, the shell color is yellowish because the anal parasite will be found in the bile duct and gallbladder and the egg will take the color of the bile. Uh, in Parampistomum species, the shell color is yellowish due to, their, due to the location of the adult parasite and the egg will take the color of the bile as well. And the next characteristic feature is the operculum. So operculum is very distinct in uh, the eggs of the Parampistomum species, whereas in Parampistomum operculum is there, but there is no there, this is very indistinct and the knob is uh, very distinct in case of uh, uh, parampistomum but in case of the fasciola the, there is no knob on it and embryonic mass is very clear in parampistomum species and less clear or indistinct in the eggs of fasciola species. Uh, treatment of animals suffering from amphistomiasis or parampistomiasis. There are different drugs available, but the most common drugs for the treatment of amphistomiasis or parampistomiasis is oxyclozanide and niclosamide. So oxyclozanide popularly used for cattle and buffalo. The dose is 18 milligram per kg body weight per oral, two doses two days apart. And another, uh, another uh, popular drug, drug is niclosamide. This is also used in cattle, buffalo, and sheep. The dose is around 50 to 100 milligram per kg body weight per oral single dose. According to the literature, if the dose increases to 100 milligram per kg body weight, which is 99% effective for the killing of immature parampistomes, and 80, around 18 percent effective for the killing of adult parampistomes in sheep. And finally the control um, as there is involvement of intermediate host in the life cycle of parampistomes so snail control is very important and the cattle should be gazed on highlands 
where is this where there is this infestation of the intermediate host so these are the reference books that I have used during preparation of this presentation and I have also taken help from different internet resources and this is all about amphistomiasis or amphistomiasis thanks for listening and if you want to get more videos on parasitology particularly helminthology please subscribe my channel and stay with my channel